Welcome Traveler, my name is Blake Rea, and this is Love, Death, and Dice. One of the major badges of honor every Wargamer must earn is turning literal garbage into beautiful, usable, immersive terrain. Soda cans into gasoline tanks, styrofoam into concrete buildings, cereal boxes into full-blown cities. It's amazing what can be done with just a little bit of ingenuity and a thin wallet. But a lot of these builds I've noticed focus on the industrial, things that are man-made. What about terrain that's alien, organic, and hellishly different than human structures? Today, I want to build alien-style terrain for my games of Warhammer 40,000 and Warhammer Horus Heresy. A while back, I sent my one-week in for repair. When it returned, I noticed that the corners were protected with these bulbous triangle cardboard inserts. The scale is somewhat larger than individual models, but it'll be perfect for providing cover to whole units and can easily fill up an entire table. The material is tough and resistant to cuts, and even if it did break, it's not like I'm losing whew, expensive pieces of terrain. Normally, it would be wise to seal in an absorbent material like this with Mod Podge, but I think the cardboard is so well packed, just regular primer should do. Of course, I'm out of my cheap black primer, so let's hop in my car and take a little trip. I want to bang this terrain out in less than a day, so my game plan is to use cheap black and white spray paint to create a quick zenithal highlight, and then using inks, I tint it to have some sweet colors. When I went to Michael's though, they were out of the ink I needed. Instead, I shifted gears to another color that caught my eye. With all the right materials purchased, I headed outside and began priming my triangles. Like I thought, the primer held up fine on the cardboard without soaking through. The paint I'm using was rather sticky though, which was annoying, but I can fix that later. If you look closely, the material has a lot of ridges and little overhangs, so make sure to spray the primer from below. You don't want any fuzzy brown showing through. Speaking of fuzzy, when I went into zenithal with the white, all of these little tufts started showing. I'm not crazy about them, but luckily it's an alien world, so anything goes. To zenithal, I only hit the triangles from above, focusing mostly on the three edges of each structure. Most of the triangle was covered in white now, but all of those little recesses we talked about earlier remain black or gray. Before we attack this thing with inks, let's hear a word from this week's sponsor. Me! Yes, I'm sponsoring my own episode. Blake, you're a straight white guy on the internet. You have to have a podcast, right? You're damn right I do. Spiritual Successor is a comedy game design podcast where my best friend and I take your horrible, nasty, and wonderful video game ideas and turn them into the next best-selling titles. Some of our hit games include Adam Sandler's Dead Space Remastered, Barbie's Eldritch Adventure, and a personal favorite of mine, my co-host, who has never played Warhammer in his life, describes what a Warhammer video game should look like. If you want to jump in and listen to an episode, I have links below. And if you have a horrible, nasty video game idea, please pitch it to us on our Twitter, also linked below. Now back to the episode. Ever since I was a kid, I have always loved the combination of purple and blue. It has this hint of magic while still feeling foreign to me. With many Tyranids using these exact colors, I thought, what better scheme to use? Using Liquitex, uh, however you pronounce that, I sprayed a thin layer on the topmost part of the triangle, leaving some of the white and gray towards the bottom part. This shade is so damn lovely! I've been using it for my Night Lord's army, and I've got a bunch extra lying around, and this was a great way to use up what's left. What I love most about inks is that they fit so well into my style of painting and how I approach highlights and shadows. For me, it's easier to think in grayscale when picking source angles, exposure, and saturation, because I can decide all of that with levels of black, gray, and white, and then tint over that with my transparent ink, which will fill in all of the hue variances for me. I don't know if I described that all that well, but it's good for me, and it could be good for you. Using the lovely purple I found earlier, I created a soft transition at the lowest parts of the model by underspraying. I also gave special care to fill in the little valleys between each ridge, making the blue pop. Ideally, I don't want pure black anywhere on this model. For me, pure black and even pure white looks fake. Light is always bouncing around and mixing with nearby surfaces. To color something pure black or white implies it doesn't exist as part of its environment which to me breaks immersion. Once the inks are dry, all that's left is to seal in that saturated goodness and get rid of that sticky primer feeling. The ink has a satin finish, which I like, but I don't have any satin varnish on hand. You could use gloss to get that wet feeling, but 
At this scale, most glossy things feel plastic to me, save for a few exceptions. So for this project, I hit each piece with matte varnish, and we're done. For a first time trash to terrain project, I think these things came along amazingly, and best yet, it only took like an hour to make. Would these make Tyranids vomit with happiness? Maybe? If you have any ideas for terrain tutorials, let me know in those comments below. Until next time, go make something cool.